Hi everybody. I have a few things to say to you this week. Um, kind of a review of what's been going on in the first part of the class. Um, first of all, I want to talk about, well I do want to talk about some major actions of the Holocaust that we started learning about in the first part of the world must know, the Nazi assault. And we saw a progression of what happened to the Jews from the boycotts of their businesses, that was the first major action, um, to the stripping of their rights, um, who they could marry, who they couldn't, um, who they, um, what they, how they were deemed to be Jews, you know, what created a Jew, um, what a Mischling is, which will come up um, when we read the last book. Um, they lost property, they lost their homes, um, they were told to get out and to go um, usually to the ghettos. Um, loss of access to education, they were kicked out of public schools, uh, they lost positions in the university, um, and they lost of businesses. Um, also, I forgot to put how they were kicked out of public offices, how they were kicked out of um, universities if they were professors. Um, in other words, they were no longer considered people. Um, they were considered a burden on society. Um, they were considered diseased and evil. And that's how they uh, communicate, the Nazis communicated this to the um, Jews. Now, as it moved on, they had stripped all these people of their rights. They, they didn't have a way to learn and earn earn a living. They didn't have um, homes sometimes. So what did they do? The Nazis, they moved them to the ghetto. Um, in the ghetto, there were random, random acts of terror. Um, you could be walking down the street um, of your ghetto and there might be a German Nazi officer who's in the ghetto and he might not have thought you jumped into the street fast enough when he was on the sidewalk so he shoots you. Um, he might just uh, pick a number of Jews, the Nazi officer, and say, hey, uh, clean these streets, and if he didn't think you were doing it fast enough, shoot ya. There was little food in the ghetto. They provided them. First of all, people in the ghetto had to work. They shipped them to work camps. Some people couldn't work, especially the old and the infirmed. And um, there was no access to food. If they did have tickets, little ration tickets or money to buy food, um, there were lines. There just wasn't enough to go around. This, of course, left, led to sickness, and there were no access to doctors. Um, there might be a doctor in the camp, but he didn't have access to medical supplies. And the sickness would spread, and um, people would die. It was the Nazis' way of thinning out the ghettos. Don't feed them, see if they could starve to death, see if we can make them sick and kill them off. And when there were still people left in the ghettos, we moved to the concentration camps. They moved them into trains. And one thing I want you to remember about the trains is the trains made, train system made a lot of money. They charged for the transporting of these people, and um, they made a lot of money on it. And this was mentioned after... Uh, the Holocaust left that uh, or ended that um, there were a lot of companies that profited, especially the rail system from the um, from the um, charges. There was no water on the train or very little, and there were pale um, there was a pail for excrement that soon overflowed. I can't imagine living with no water being three days on a train and having no place really to relieve myself. Um, the stench and the closeness of the bodies, remember they packed them all in. Um, didn't get any better when they got to the camps. They um, opened the doors and anybody that was dead they threw into a pile. And they put the, um, in a camp where that was would be a work camp, they would put um, the Jews through... Um, selection where somebody said hey yeah we're gonna keep you we're gonna keep you you go that way you go that way you go that way and they took them right to the gas chambers um they took both groups through a system where they had to take off their clothes and um go into a shower some people actually did go into showers and the other people went into something made to look like showers and um were gassed 
Um, and the death camps, they just took them right to um, the gas chambers and then to the crematory, and that was the subject of Escape to Sobador. We've read some pretty gruesome stuff. We've watched kind of a, um, at least a movie that showed the work camp or the death camps, but the spirit of the Jews and the Russians that were taken there and how they were able to overcome um, for some of them and escape this death sentence that they had in the camp. Um, there were acts of resistance during this time. Like I said, the uprising at Sobador. Um, and also um, in the ghettos, keeping records of events, which some of you mentioned, um, in the discussion boards and in your journals, um, having schools for children, having educational uh, opportunities. There were religious acts also. There were still people uh, studying the Talmud. They would have their Friday night um, dinner. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, the Shabbat. And that night where they would uh, light the candles and and uh, reflect on their week. Um, they still tried to have um, religious um, activities. They also had the arts. They tried to put on plays. Um, these were all acts of resistance, trying to create a normal life inside a situation that was not normal. Um... I think this angered the, the Nazis to some extent and maybe reasons why ghettos were emptied as quickly as they were. Now we're in the last chapter and it's that kind of sounds like, oh my goodness, that's awful. Um, but it is about those who resisted um, throughout, people who took in children, people who took in Jews and hid them. Um, people who tried to buck the system and get them uh, ways to leave the country. Um, you're going to read about those in the last chapter. You're also going to read about the aftermath, how families were trying to reunite. Um, they had boards where they put up seeking so-and-so if I'm here or whatever, trying to um, get back together a lot. No, you guys were too little, but after 9-11, people were putting up um, post-its and, and stuff on billboards saying, hey, um, I'm trying to locate so-and-so, or hey, I'm alive, um, can my family find me? Same type of thing. Um, there are also displaced persons camps. I don't know why I wrote act. Sometimes my brain doesn't work. Displaced persons camps where um, the Red Cross came in and tried to establish some sort of order, help people get papers to emigrate to some other country like Israel, the U.S., Canada. I think Canada did a better job taking in um, Holocaust survivors than did the U.S., um, um, providing them with services with access to medical care. Um, so those were some of the events that were um, happening in the aftermath that you're going to read about. What you have this week is a quiz on the aftermath. You have your log on the aftermath and the discussion board, which isn't just on the, uh, not, I'm sorry, quiz on the last chapter, log on the last chapter. The discussion board isn't just on the last chapter, but it's on the entire, kind of the entire book. Um, you know, what is it that affected you, bothered you, surprised you, those kinds of things. Um, the actual assignment says, the discussion board, um, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm in, hol in uh, grammar. You don't want to take my grammar class, do you? I don't think so, because um, you guys have really good grammar um, for the most part. Uh, blah, 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 where are my content? Sorry about that. Um, you're going to read the last chapter. You're going to do the log. Um, the last chapter discussion board is think about what you've learned, reflect on how it affected you, um, and contemplate why Holocaust studies is offered separately, and explain what you've gained from studying the Holocaust and what you may have lost. Use actual examples um, from the books 
to show uh, what affected you, um, what you've gained from studying it, what, why was it important to learn about the camps, the uh, ghettos, the assault on the, on the Jews. And what did you lose by reading all this? What did you believe that may have shaken? What beliefs did you have that may have been shaken? Um, so write me. And when I put a word post, everybody's saying, mine's over 300 words. Oh, my goodness. That's usually the minimum. But I don't want you writing pages and pages. Okay? So, um, you know, if, if write at least 300 if you have more to say that's perfectly okay um, and then you'll respond and then remember the quiz it's 30 points true false on the last chapter and I do hope that you are um, reading the last chapter but then you can also use the book for the quizzes um, I don't think I have much more to say except have a good week if you have questions you know where to find me and um, hopefully spring will be here soon and we won't find snow on the ground every time we wake up in the morning like I did this morning. Take care.